Hello everyone, it's GigaBeef here and today we're checking out the SAG AK buffs recently pushed out for this gun to see if this is something that you should consider using in your raids. There are two variants of the SAG AK which are distinct weapons in Tarkov and both have seen improvements to recoil and ergonomics with the regular version now at 107 vertical down from 125 and the short version at 109 down from 128 previously. On ergonomics, the regular is now at 50 base, up from 45, and the short one similarly has gone from 48 to 53, so a 5 ergo boost on both. These base recoil and ergo numbers as usual refer to the values that the weapon starts with if you take off all the mods and the parts, and are just left with the unusable stripped weapon before adding anything to it. Though as you might imagine, these are some pretty hefty buffs, but what does it mean for the builds? Let's start by looking at the min recoil versions to get an idea of how laser beamy you can get this thing. So firstly we're going to look at the lowest recoil build using the one from Skier 2 which is 72k for the basic one, they're usually cheaper on the flea market but we're going to use this one to start with and there's not a great deal you can do with it. The SAG tube which fits the stock on there is only one, there is only one handguard and there is only one gas tube so to start with we're going to look at the muzzles and we're going to replace the basic one with the reactor and on top of that we're going to have the waffle which is by far the best combination for 545 although it is very very expensive. Next up, this is an M-Lock handguard, so it fits these AFGs, so to get something else we need to use an M-Lock 4.1 inch, and then on top of that we're going to use the RK2, just so we can see what the minimum recoil build is. Then from the stock, because we can't change the tube or anything, we just need to change this stock out. Now, one interesting thing about the SAG is that it can't use the regular stocks from the AKs, so you're kind of stuck using what would normally be the ones that go on 5.56 weapons onto the M4 and those kind of guns. So we're going to use the PRS Gen 3 just for the moment to see min recoil, and this is pretty much all you can do. So this gets you to 35 recoil on the long version, which is kind of insane. You can make the ergonomics a little bit better by changing over the pistol grip over to the AGS, which is the one that's really expensive. I don't really see many people using it unless they pick it up or something because it's just so pricey and you don't get that much for it. And then on the charging handle, you can add the CSS, which is the knurled, the AK knurled charging handle, which gives you three more ergonomics. And that takes you to, if we get rid of this magazine, it gets you to 61 ergonomics and 35 vertical recoil. So given that we've put on these parts that are very recoil centric and normally reduce your ergonomics by quite a bit, having 61 ergo left over is actually pretty insane. Now if you were going to optimize this, as usual we normally swap out the RK2 and the best for price, I mean this is not necessarily budget, but the SE5 is probably the best, you lose two recoil points for 16 ergonomics, not that we really need it on this gun because it's so high already. And then in terms of the Gen 3, usually you'd swap this out for some version of the MOE with the butt pad because that's generally best bang for buck. So I think in terms of the, getting this weapon as good as you can, like a meta version, I think this is probably it. This takes you to 39 vertical recoil from 35, so you only lose four recoil, but you gain a lot of ergonomics, 84, which is an enormous amount. However, the issue here is that a lot of these parts are really quite pricey. So if you wanted to make a cheap version instead, and you didn't mind going loud, I think the loud build is a lot cheaper because you can use the RRD4C, which is one of the best muzzle brakes you can get for the 545 caliber because it's minus 19% recoil, which is actually pretty, pretty good. And then for the vertical foregrips, we're going to use, or an angled, I guess, in this case, we're going to use the AFG M Nox because you don't need the rail. It fits on as is, and it's actually a pretty good grip. The AGS is a bit overkill for this weapon because it's like plus 14 ergonomics. So what we're going to do is swap this back. Usually you'd use the Tango down because it's quite cheap. But you can actually just keep on the basic grip on here. As you can see, we're getting really close to maximum ergonomics here with 99. And then if you didn't want to spend all that money on the MOE and the rubber butt pad, you can use something which is slightly cheaper, which is the Chris stock. It's only a small, small, small amount worse. It's a tiny bit worse on ergonomics and a tiny bit worse on recoil points. But it's about half the price because you don't need to buy the butt pad separately. This is actually pretty good and you don't need this knurl charging handle if you don't want to pay for it or the RP1. I don't think it's necessarily worthwhile. So this cheaper version, all you're having to do is buy the RRD, which is Mechanic 3, which is kind of the pinch point, an AFG M-Lock, maybe another grip if you want to, and this Chris stock. And that gets you to 45 recoil and 95 ergonomics, which on a semi-auto weapon, it's probably not as problematic. I was originally going to show these builds for the short version as well, but to be honest, they're almost identical. The one thing that's consistent is they have three more ergonomics for every single build, and then the recoil is almost the same. So 35 recoil for the long minimum version, 36 for the short, 39 for the optimized, and actually 39 for the short optimized, and 45 for the cheap long version versus 46 on the cheap short version. And so the difference between these is really, really minute. And personally, I think I might just go with the short version if you have the choice between the two and the prices are about the same because they're almost identical and you get a little bit of extra ergonomics for going for the short one. 
As you might have spotted already, one of the biggest issues with the SAG is muzzles and suppressors. For going quiet, only the waffle is really any good, unlike the equivalents for 556, and there is a large gap between it and the other suppressors that you can attach. The waffle maker itself is minus 7% recoil, but the reactor muzzle brake that fits into it is 17%, so you get minus 24% recoil together. This compares to the hexagon's minus 9% recoil, the PVS's minus 10, and the TGPA's minus 10.5. Even on ergonomics, the waffle combo loses 20, compared to 22 for the hexagon and 25 for the other two. This problem is not really an SAG AK thing specifically, but more of a 545 thing in general. Fortunately, in our case, you can get away with worse recoil on a semi-auto weapon, so if you did want to run suppressed on more of a budget, then just check to see which of the three is the cheapest and use that, given they're all about the same, although it's usually the PBS. The Ergo on the SAG is definitely good enough to support suppressing it, and even using it with cheaper mods gets to around 56 recoil with 55 ergonomics, which is still very respectable. On the loud side, the RRD is Mechanic 3 and is nearly as good as the Waffle with minus 19% recoil at a much lower price of 13k once you can buy it from the trader post level 30. Alternatively, the PWS is Skier 3 with minus 16%, but you can get a hold of these from the short variant of the SAG fairly regularly on the flea, as people often forget to take them off when listing on the market. Failing that, the DTK is Skier 2 for 5k, although it only gives minus 13% recoil reduction. On four grips, using the 4.1 rail, a quick link search can show the cheapest grips if you don't have Peacekeeper 3, and the Magpul AFG can usually be found fairly budget on the flea in one of its many colours. The Chris stock on the cheap build comes in black from Peacekeeper 2, which makes it very accessible. One interesting thing about the SAG is magazine choice. Because the ergonomics of this weapon is so high, if you want, you can actually use 60 rounders pretty easily and still have decent handling. Plus, the 60s for 545 are not that expensive, usually in the 20 to 30k range. Although not as important with a semi-auto weapon, having a big mag like this does allow you to output a surprising number of rounds before needing to reload. Onto the ammo, this is personally one of the harder choices with the SAG AK. As we're not using full auto, we really want our shots to count, but because we're in the 545 calibre, the damages are pretty lacklustre. We really want to prioritise headshots, but still give ourselves the chance to thorax people in the heat of the moment. On this basis, the leg meta rounds aren't very useful in my opinion, and the bare minimum to use is the PP round. At 36 pen, it's broadly a 50-50 against class 4 armour on the first shot to penetrate, so while fine for full auto weapons, is a bit sketchy for the SAG, as you'll bounce off class 4 helmets half the time, and will take around 3-4 hits to kill through class 4 thorax armour. Remembering that both damage and penetration values for rounds drop off at range, which is probably where we'll be using the SAG mostly, at 100 meters we're looking at 33.5 pen for PP, which is more like a 25% chance versus class 4, which is really not ideal. BP rounds with one more damage and pen is not really much better, however BT with 40 pen is pretty decent as a class 4 buster. This helps to mitigate the drop off in penetration significantly, and with 87% pen chance at point blank and about 50% at 100 meters against class 4 armor, this is much more usable for a bit of range. At 100 meters though, we are under 40 damage, which is the main problem with 545. As you gain in chance to defeat armor, you lose on the damage of the rounds and can struggle to kill at range unless you get a headshot. Even then, it can be possible to not kill through a class 4 helmet once the damage reaches near 35, as the mitigation on penetration can take this lower than the head HP. It's worth mentioning here that BT rounds have just been banned from the flea market only a few days ago as of the time of this recording, so are now a little bit harder to get access to, but there are still two barters to be done at Prap or 2. The other round you might consider is BS, but with 40 damage the issues discussed already apply even more so. With 51 penetration though, this defeats class 5 cleanly at close range and still has a greater than 50% chance to go through at 100 meters, although with 37 damage. It would be interesting to test whether the lower mitigation of armor on BS due to the high pen makes it more likely to headshot at range than BT despite its lower stated damage, one for a future video perhaps. The final note on ammo is that both of these weapons use PS ammunition as their zeroing point. This is a non-issue for these to be honest because PS has a speed of 890 meters per second and all of the sensible rounds are between 880 and 890 anyway, so it will have an unnoticeable effect on the zeroing when using scopes. So do I think the SAG is worth using after the buffs? It's certainly a fun addition to the 545 suite of weapons, as with high ergo and low recoil but in semi-auto only, it fills a niche of sneaky mid-range play given it works well with suppressors for those who like that style of gameplay. However, for me, the slightly higher price than the regular 545 weapons and the issues with ammunition, especially at range, is too much of a trade-off to be a staple weapon for me, but give it a try, you might love it. 
So next up, if you haven't checked out my class 5 armor guide for 12 12 30 yet, then go watch that here. Otherwise, as usual, a big shout out to all my patrons, hit all the buttons if you enjoyed the video, and as always, have fun in your raids.